Asiatic, why are they not using Asiatic color scheme? Obviously an inference is coming. They have calendars. The Mexicans have more calendars than anybody else. Why, in addition to the three other calendars they had, they introduced a fourth calendar, which is Egyptian, with the identical 365.25. They have their own conchs, they have their own, they've worked out their own native mathematics. Why then are they taking this into their system? All of these things have to be explained. Why at Elvia John in the Olmec world, in the heart of the Olmec world, there is paper fung made from wood pulp. Nowhere on earth is paper made from wood pulp except among the Egyptians at this point in time. Why are they moving enormous stones which they never moved before from vast quarries using the same method of breaking stone and linking it together? Using the same method of moving the stone as the Egyptians? bringing it down the swamps. Why is their agriculture identical as on the Nile? They're dealing with the same flood problems. Why are they responding in exactly the same way? They have the same hydraulic system of agriculture. You go down in Peru, which is touched by this, you see the terraced agriculture like in Egypt. Why are they doing all of these things? All their kings are carrying these things. They have the plume serpent motif. They have the great earrings under their ears. They have, the, they have their beards as an index of rank and royalty. They have the purple, the use of purple. Yesterday, for example, I caught our guide, Hector, saying that these things were painted red. I said, are you sure you mean red? He said, yes. I said, well, tell me what makes the red. What do they use to make red? He says, cochineal. I said, that's not red, cochineal is the equivalent in the Mediterranean of the Murex shell purple. Cochineal makes purple. All the temples in America, wherever they paint, they paint purple. They even painted the stone heads purple. Medinel, Zanel found the patch of purple on one of the stone heads and found that the weathering of time, the erosion of the years, have taken the purple off the stone heads. That's the color they use in Egypt. That's the color they use in, in painting when the main color used in painting the temples is purple because purple is emblematic of the power of the gods. And the reason why the Egyptians struck on that is was by a peculiar arbitrary phenomenon that the murex shell, before it reached its final fixed purple, went through a series of tints which were like that of the Nile in flood. Now most of you are city people who, cont who think that water is colorless or crystal. Water is not. This is only one kind of water. There is red water, there is blue water, there is green water, there is yellow water, there is brown water, there is silver water, there is crystal water, there is black water. All of these types of things, if you lived on rivers as I did, or you lived on the Nile as the Egyptians did, you will find the water goes through many color changes. In fact, after a thunderstorm or a lightning storm, every color on earth, every color of the rainbow is on the water. And if you were accustomed, just like people who live with, among cattle, every cattle has a different color and marking. So that if you're accustomed, your eye to cattle, you know that this is Jimmy, and this is Johnny, etc. You don't mix the two things. You can tell one cattle from the other. We can't because we are not cattle people. And most of us can't tell water color from another water color because you're not water people. You don't live on rivers. And it is because of this that they were able to make a connection between the color scheme of the fluid in the murex shell before it hit purple with the color scheme of the Nile and flood. And because it seemed identical to them barring a tint or two, they concluded that the color purple was sacred because the Nile is sacred. That is why they worshipped it, and that is why common people could not use purple. I told you, for example, of the case of Margaret Hanke, who wrote a, a monograph recently on purple in which she showed that purple became so important in the Mediterranean, every European pope, 
every European king has a bit of purple taken from the Egyptians. They then took up purple. The Phoenicians ran up and down the Mediterranean with Tyrian purple. They, they m destroyed all the ports that had the murex shell until the murex shell was exhausted. And some people say that the Phoenicians came over here with the Africans searching for purple. Cochineal, which is American, nowhere on earth is cochineal found. It has been found stamped on caves in North Africa. It doesn't belong to Africa. Barry Fell and his colleagues found cochineal, and it's been analyzed and examined, and they found it on, on some caves in North Africa. And the cost of purple was so great that one L or yard of purple could be sold for nearly a million dollars at a certain point in time. Only kings could buy purple. It was not the common people. All of these are things that seem to link up the old world with the new. The Almec then go on not only touching Teotihuacan, they seem to go on to touch other places. We saw Mittler yesterday. Mittler does not have very much to offer us because Mittler is almost raised to the ground. You saw the savagery with which the Spanish struck Mittler. So that our friend could tell us that 70% of the population were destroyed by the Europeans. 70% were destroyed by the Europeans within a matter of 50 years. And you find their temples raised to the ground. And I raised with him the question of something, the question which intrigues us is that there is a secret passageway at Mittler which has not been found since the 16th century, which was found by some of the Dominican priests, where they found an enormous burial, and they closed it up, and, and it was never found again. There are lots of secrets at Mittler. But there again you find all elite coming in, and then the, the Zapotecan and other people operating at Mittler. At Monte Alban, we have something very extraordinary occurring. Monte Alban seems to be evidence of an Olmec elite which landed in the place, and as building began in new ceremonial centers, they were sacrificed. They were overthrown, it seems, by the people, the Zapotec, the people who were in that area. What evidence do we have that these are not dancers, because at first they said they were dancers, and recently they started this nonsense about hospital, that how these are sick people, that's why they look so strange. You note those people. First of all, their eyes are closed. They have a distorted pose and posture, and they're in a strange state, and their loins have been cut out in some cases. You can actually see the castration occurring. Now, I do not know of any sickness that causes people's testicles to fall out. Because that is what they're presenting as a new theory now. This is a hospital at Monte Alban. That is why you have these figures. Do you know, we only saw a few of them, 140, 140 of those types have been found at Monte Alban. And they indicate this extraordinary sacrifice that was made of ruling types. And for the first time, note, they said that at La Venta, we were not dealing with real people. We were dealing with babies and jaguars. Now they say at Monte Alban, these people have all McCoyed features. How could they have all McCoyed features when they're not, there's no such thing as all McCoyed features because they say that the reason why these people have these peculiar kinds of faces at La Venta and those places is not because they're real people looking like that, but because they're representing the baby type or they're representing the jaguar type. Now they say they have all McCoyed features. What are all McCoyed features? The Afro-Asiatic, the strange face that begins in the Olmec world that touches Monte Alban. There is the revolt. Now that is not a happy note on which to end. Obviously, all great civilizations reach a 